The coming world of the Antichrist that we read about in Revelation chapter 13 involves a series of very complicated deceptions, and those deceptions extend globally. What's happening right now, and this is something that a lot of people are not talking about, is that there is this sort of hidden campaign that's happening right now. Well, at least it used to be a hidden campaign. It's not so much of a hidden campaign anymore. Where people are standing for wicked causes in the name of righteousness. And not only do they think they stand on righteous grounds, but they are proud of the grounds on which they stand in areas that are unfathomable to stand upon. Now, there was a conference that was hosted by Tucker Carlson recently. Blaze Media was sort of the creator of it. And Tucker interviewed many of the uh, candidates, presidential candidates that are on tap. And what is really interesting is to hear what so many of them said. Now, I will tell you in the video that I'm about to play for you, one of the presidential candidates literally ended his campaign by saying what he said. And this goes back to my original point. We have made a habit of calling good evil and evil good. It's amazing when the discussion that ensues concerning the issue of Ukraine comes up, how there are people who call themselves righteous leaders who stand up for unrighteousness. Now, the problem here that we have with Ukraine is multifaceted. Ukraine is the breeding ground for absolute and total totalitarianism. I heard somebody recently, a guy who went on pontificating about the condition of Ukraine as though he was some sort of an expert because he spent a good amount of time as a missionary in another part of the world. Let's just say in close proximity to Ukraine. He now has become the expert on matters going on in Ukraine. And he says that most Christians don't understand the severity and the dynamic of the oppression that the Ukrainian people are experiencing at the hands of Russia. And that freedom is something that is at risk in Ukraine. And freedom is something that is cherished and valued and so on and so forth. And it is pretty much going away because of what's happening in Russia. Yet what he won't tell you because he very likely is too ignorant to tell you is the fact that in Ukraine, many of Zelensky's political opponents have already been executed. He is imprisoning leaders of the Christian church who are speaking up against the atrocities that are taking place in that region. And yet nobody seems to be concerned about this. We're calling good evil and evil good. And we are continuing to call good evil and evil good. And sometimes some of the most so-called righteous people are calling good evil and evil good. An example of this centers around a portion of an interview that I'm going to show you right now between Tucker Carlson and Mike Pence. Mike Pence made a statement about the United States of America that is absolutely disgusting, and he continues to demonstrate the type of mainstream warmongering individual that he is. He is a traitor to this country. He was a traitor to this country. He demonstrated being a traitor to this country many years ago, and this is why the left wing loves him. He is not, absolutely not somebody who cares about the interests of the United States of America, and he himself says it, yet there are people that are drawing a picture of him that would seem to imply that he is admirable, that he is actually righteous. But listen to what he says regarding the issue of Ukraine, and Tucker Carlson correctly questions him on the issue, and then we're going to get into a bigger issue here. We're going to get into the core of where we go when we talk about good being called evil and evil being called good. Take a listen to what he says. Along the way, the Biden administration has been slow in providing military support. Make no mistake about this. We promised them 33 Abrams. By the way, he says the Biden administration has been slow in providing support, military support to the Ukrainians. Here's the funny thing about this. We have spent more money in support of Ukraine than Russia's whole military budget for the past year. Let me just say that, number one. Number two, we've given so much to Ukraine with respect to military support to aid in totalitarian rule so that the pockets 
of certain leaders can be lined. That we have now made the United States of America defenseless. And you have a warmonger over here, this guy, who's actually making an argument that the Biden administration has erred because it has not been making good on the promises of giving warmongering tools to the Ukrainians. I think it's really funny. The Biden administration is probably a little bit tired. The Biden regime is a little bit tired. Maybe of quickly giving weapons of the modern warfare to enemy combatants. Maybe after considering what they did in Afghanistan at the tune of $82 billion. We'll just leave that be for just a second. But look at what he says here. He's referring to military support to Ukraine. Along the way, the Biden administration has been slow in providing military support. Make no mistake about this. We promised them 33 Abrams tanks in January. I heard again two weeks ago in Ukraine, they still don't have them. We've been telling them we'll train their F-16. Did you hear what he said? I heard two weeks ago in Ukraine, they still don't have them. You're supposed to be the candidate running for president of the United States, dude. And you're focused right now on the welfare of Ukraine? While Christians are being persecuted in, in Ukraine, heavily persecuted under Zelensky, probably more than most. Think that through for just a second. You're calling good evil and evil good. I heard again two weeks ago in Ukraine, they still don't have them. We've been telling them we'll train their F-16 pilots, but now they're saying maybe January we'll let somebody transfer some jets. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, have you? Uh can, can I ask you a question before uh, Tucker interrupts him for just a second? But let's pretend for one second that the Ukrainians... Under the current regime, lying regime, those that are sympathetic towards his regime, not the average Ukrainian. The average Ukrainian actually still identifies themselves as Russian, believe it or not. That's a whole other story. And that actually is a very controversial statement to make if you're not Ukrainian. But think about this for just a second. And this is, this is a, a, a real sincere question. It might seem rhetorical to some people, but to others... It should be a question that should, at the bare minimum, be addressed at least for just a second. And that is this. Assuming we are able to give any level of training to any of these pilots to fly F-16s, what makes you think you've got a chance as an F-16 pilot with three weeks of experience against a MiG that is designed to pretty much shoot anything out of the sky unless you're an F-22 Raptor. Tell me, tell me how that makes sense. Only the best F-16 pilots in the world, which are American F-16 pilots and Israeli F-16 pilots, they're the only ones, can affect the kind of evasive maneuvers necessary to be able to render aggressive attacks in an airspace so heavily patrolled like the one in Ukraine. Tell me how that works, folks. Those F-16 pilots don't have a chance. This man is a warmongerer. He's all about building the military industrial complex so that he can line his pockets to do things what traditional presidents actually do. I love how Tucker just disrupts this guy and exposes him for what he is and shuts him down for the fake and the traitor that he is to this country. Watch what happens. We'll let somebody transfer some jets. I'm sorry, Mr. Vice President, have you, I know you're running for president. You are Thank distra you, you are distressed notice. that the Ukrainians... Do you notice the, uh, the, just the abject arrogance that Pence has in his response to Tucker? Think about it like this. If Mike Pence cannot control his temper and his frustration being interviewed by a journalist who's absolutely brilliant like Tucker Carlson, how in the world is he going to sit in front of Xi Jinping? How is he going to put on a poker face in front of Putin? People don't think about this. They, they don't get it. If Mike Pence can't stand up in the Capitol on that fateful day that we all understand and know, the day that so many Americans were betrayed, if he cannot stand up and do what he was called to do as the vice president of the United States, what makes you think he's going to be a great commander in chief? These are people that are calling good, evil, and evil good. Believe me when I say this. They are calling good, evil, and evil good. Do not let these deep staters fool you. 
you are Thank distra- you, you are distressed notice. that the Ukrainians don't have enough American tanks. Every city in the United States has become much worse over the past three years. Yeah. Drive around. There's not one city that's gotten better in the United States. Okay. And it's visible. Our economy has degraded. The suicide rate has jumped. Public filth and disorder and crime have exponentially increased. He's not wrong. He's 100% right. And look at how irritated Pence is getting. Look at how upset this trader is getting. If I were him, I would be upset too. I would be upset hearing about what's going on with the cities. But look at the arrogant and wicked and evil response that he provides. And it's arrogant and wicked and evil because if he's a godly man and he knows the word, he'll know that the Bible tells him to be mindful of the nation in which he lives. But look what happens. And yet your concern is that the Ukrainians, a country most people can't find on a map, who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars, don't have enough tanks. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. (laughs) Tucker, I've heard that routine from you before, but that's not my concern. It's... (laughs) Yeah, I... Is there... Okay, is there any way you could take that response out of context? When a Christian says their country is not their concern, how can they even be a Christian? Not my concern. It's not my concern. Not my concern. Not my concern. There's no way he could have been referring to Ukraine because Tucker asked him a very direct question. What about your concern for the nation? And he says, not my concern. Look, I'll, I'll play it one more time here. Who've received tens of billions of U.S. tax dollars don't have enough tanks. I think it's a fair question to ask, like, where's the concern for the United States in that? Well, it's not my concern. <laughs> Tucker, I've heard that routine from you before, but that's not my concern. I'm running for president of the United States because I think this country's in a lot of trouble. I think. Jer- How can he say it's not my concern? It's not my concern. It's not my concern. And I'm running for the president of the United States because we're in a lot of trouble. I'll tell you why. Because not my concern was a reflection of his real heart. I'm running for the president of the United States because we're in trouble is a reflection of the campaign line that they feed him to tell people who are blinded in the conservative movement. He's telling the company line. Now, there will be people that might ask in the chat, so I'm going to just beat you to the line. Here it is. Ready? Why in the world, James, are you a pastor then if you keep talking about stuff like this? What business does pastors have talking about issues like this in politics and so on and so forth? I'll tell you what my business is. I am a teacher of the word of God. And part of my ability to teach the word of God cannot simply center on my ability to functionally articulate biblical principles. It must center around my ability to show you how to practically apply it in every context of life. If you do not know how to apply the word of God in every context of life, I am failing to do my job because your lack of knowledge will kill you. And if I am the reason why the lack of knowledge is propagated, we have a problem. You guys ready for the solution? If you have your Bibles, and this is the preacher and me coming out, right? If you have your Bibles, go to Romans. In Romans chapter 16, you're thinking Romans 16 of all places. Why Romans 16? Romans 16 verse 19, it says, for your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad therefore on your behalf, but look what he says, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning to that which is evil. What does that mean? It means go out of your way to make yourself familiar with the righteous and stay away from the wickedness. Stay away from the evil. That is a solution in this battle between good and evil. The more familiar you become with righteousness, the more familiar you become with the word, the better equipped you become in fighting the wickedness that is around you. I say this to so many people on a regular basis. If you contend for righteousness by making yourself familiar exclusively with the word of God, evil doesn't have a chance. Folks, we've got a fight to fight. It's called the good fight. The only way we fight the good fight is by putting the Lord first in all that we do and making him the center of everything in our life.
Can I make you this promise? There is nothing more glorious than meeting the Lord in the air while you are in the midst of a hardcore drag out fight against evil for the sake of righteousness in the name of the Lord. Talk about going out in a blaze of glory. Let's get it done, folks. We've got a real fight to fight. It's a real battle. It's a battle between good v. evil. And may we stand on the ground of righteousness for the sake of all that God has done for us. Amen?